Outrage is growing over U.S. star sprinter Shakiri Richardson being suspended from the Tokyo Olympics after testing positive for marijuana. When we come back, a closer look at why critics say it's time for the rules to change. Stay with us. We will guide you through it all tonight. We have made it through another week together. Big hug, Richard. We tell all our patients how much they're loved. We hold their hands. David, we're showing our love and support for all the ICU staff. They're the heroes in this. <laughs> Now, when it matters most, the straightforward facts. ABC News is America's number one news. Good Morning America, number one in the morning, nine years running. World News Tonight with David Muir, number one in the evening with America's most watched newscast. 2020, the number one news magazine on Friday nights. The View, the number one daytime talk show. And ABC News Live, number one in streaming news. ABC News is America's number one news. Welcome back. Sprinter Shakari Richardson made headlines this week when it was announced she will not be on the U.S. Olympic track and field team after testing positive for THC for marijuana. A THC is prohibited by the World Anti-Doping Agency. Now the incident is sparking a larger debate about marijuana use in sports. For more, let's bring in ABC News contributor and host of the ABC News podcast Life Out Loud with LZ Granderson, the man himself, LZ Granderson. LZ, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, Elsie, I know everyone has been talking about this. Everyone seems to have an opinion, but we want to catch people up here. Uh, that El that Shakari, she won the 100-meter race at the Olympic trials, making her the fastest woman in America. She agreed to a 30-day suspension for the TH THC violation, saying she used marijuana to help cope with the death of her biological mother a week before the Olympic trials. But while the World Anti-Doping Agency bans THC, marijuana is legal in Oregon, where she used it. So. What do you make of this decision to leave her off the roster? It's very disappointing. It's disappointing for a lot of reasons. I mean, we can talk about the questions as to why is THC on this list to begin with, because as far as the organization can tell, the science is not definitive. In fact, there have been studies that have shown that the science says it doesn't help you in terms of aerobic performance, strength, or any other performance enhancement aspect. You're supposed to be anti-doping, and yet you have this THC on your list when it doesn't show any sort of benefit to athletes in competition. And even though loosely I saw in the report it suggested that it can help an athlete focus, um, there are a number of drugs that can help an athlete focus. So if using a supplement to help you focus bans you, then why isn't everything banned that will help you focus? Um, seems very inconsistent in that. But this is the larger disturbing point to me in terms of what we did stateside to this young woman. We didn't support her. We didn't get behind her. Including her on the relay team at least says, we got your back. Instead, that left her out to dry. And I'm really upset about this because the organization that banned her initially, they've worked with Russia. When Russian athletes were caught up in a scandal that seemed to have gone all the way from the Kremlin down, what they said to quote unquote clean athletes was, you can still compete internationally, you just can't fly the Russian flag. So we've seen this organization work with people when it wants to, and I'm really disappointed that we stateside did not put more pressure on this global organization to demand that they worked with her. And LZ, you know, the president himself came out. He said rules are rules. U.S. Track and Field also issued a statement saying while USATF fully agrees that the merit of the World Anti-Doping Agency rules related to the THC should be reevaluated, it would be detrimental to the integrity of the U.S. Olympic team trials for track and field if USATF amended its policies following competition only weeks before the Olympic Games. So do they have a point here? Is it unfair to change the rules now for her? Well, let's think about it. The organization in charge of aquatics literally tried to change the rules 
by not allowing a cap that would have taken care of black hair better, more effectively, they made the announcement of a ban like two weeks ago. The Olympics starts this month. So if you're concerned about changing the rules that could impact athletes so close to competition, why aren't you more upset about what this aquatic global organization did when it, came, when it comes to curly hair and kinky hair with swim caps that was just announced a couple of weeks ago, but you don't want to fight in regards to the THC? And I know people were saying rules are rules and that's the end of the story. Well, I don't mind going to the end of the story as long as we talk about the beginning of the story. Because the reason why THC and marijuana in general is vilified in America, if not globally, the way that it is, is because of the war on drugs initiated by Richard Nixon way back in the 60s that wasn't based on science then either, but rather his own prejudices. So I'm all about saying end of story as long as you're willing to include the beginning of the story. LZ, let's take a closer look at Richardson's response to all of this. She said in a recent interview, look, don't judge me. I'm human. Um, I happen to run a little faster. How would you look at her response and how it's impacted this conversation? I mean, she's been what you would expect a professional to be, which is she owned up to the mistake that she made. She explained why she made the mistake that she made. And then she as far as I can tell, has not gone out of her way to take away from any focus from her fellow racers or the games as a whole. She's accepted responsibility, and as far as I can tell, she has stepped back from the media spotlight for the most part and just allowed the games to take place without her. I think that is incredibly brave and strong. I'm not sure if I would have the strength to do that, recognizing that there is a level of unfairness in this. Rules is rules, sort of, you know, enforcement, but again, I just talked about what they did for Russia, um, but she's been fantastic. And I really look forward to seeing the rest of her career um, and see what else she has for us. And she has been applauded for handling this with class. Elsie Granderson, you, sir, are always classy, and we love having you on. Thank you. Thank and you so much for having me. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.